Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date is July 17th of 2023, and it's 21 minutes after midnight on the 17th of July. I just moved a few things around. I'm not sure, I think this, yeah, I think this Roku TV that I, my small Roku TV, which I almost never use. I think I'm going to have it on or here from now on. I you know, hooked it up after uh, and there's there's just so much stuff. Uh, most of it junk, but like there's the Roku channel and my god, they have I don't think I was able to go all the way through. I know I wasn't able to go just going clicking channel to channel and different categories of, of you know, channels that you go to and then there's channels within those channels and it's just, now an awful lot of it is really, really, you know, I mean, old stuff and uh, not very good stuff, but just such a tremendous amount of stuff. Um, I think I probably have this, I just moved, I had the uh, camera over here uh, on top of my computer and it was okay but I, I think I just need a, one of the location, one of the things I was using before. Uh, well, let's see, um, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm going to order uh, when I can, uh, probably about a week or so, the uh, microphone stand, and I think that's going to make a big improvement, and uh, I I saw, I think it's only like, what, $30, did I say? And I just happened, uh, well, you know, Amazon knows everything, <laughs> everything that I'm thinking, doing, or whatever, and uh, they had one for $15, but I, I did uh, this set right here on the desk, but I did not uh, like the looks of it. Um, so I'll, I'll be happy, I'm sure, with the one that I'm going to get here in about a week or so. And that's going to put the microphone a lot closer to my face. And I think the audio is going to be even better than I've had in a long time. Um, I happen to go to, I'm not a, well, I was a fan of the raccoon guy. Okay. I, Somebody, a couple people have attacked me <laughs> for saying Raccoon Man, Raccoon Whisperer. Uh, I watched him in the past a lot. I mean, like every day or something. Okay, I'm tired of seeing them feeding the raccoons. I mean, I can only take so much of that. But it was interesting. And then, uh, you know, when he has come down sick, um, I've been checking it occasionally because uh, I'm curious and concerned for him. So I've been checking in. And, uh, I went, I didn't check in. Yes, I did. That's right. I went and I saw a, saw the raccoon guy's wife out there and there was a woman sitting next to her. So I, I checked on that and uh, that's uh, the raccoon guy's sister, and I think that's the first time, I don't know, probably, maybe the first time she's been there or something, or gone out with the, because uh, she was kind of concerned there when she first sat down next to uh, his wife, uh, his sister-in-law, what was there, her son, I don't know. Anyway, she was kind of concerned and right away, you know, she they took the hot dogs very gently from her hand and everything. 
So, but then there was a uh, comment left by him down in, the, in a comment thing that said uh, that the uh, lady there is his sister and that she's going to have surgery tomorrow to ple please pray for her. So, anyway, um, I just happened to come across a ham radio operator, an elderly one, I, a guy, I don't know how old he is, I'm probably younger than I am. I'm 82. Uh, and I just happened to, it, it just popped up. My amateur radio license has expired and I just couldn't navigate the FCC site. I think if I went back to it, I spent two hours one day and two hours the next day trying to log in there so I could, in fact, I ended up uh, paying the fee to renew my license. And then the site that I paid it at when I got all done, they said, okay, uh, you need to log into the FCC site and they have a record, you know, that you have paid here and whatever. <laughs> so I ended up paying for the seven year license and I haven't even got the seven years license. And I really, there's a little bit of me that misses having, of course I almost never used my ham radio, but uh, I don't know, it's sort of a thing knowing that if I ever needed to or if, you know, something bad happens, uh, and uh, I would have it, you know, and so I don't have the license. And I also realized when I had trouble uh, <clears throat> logging into the FCC site, because you only had to log in like every seven years or something like that, something like that. In fact, I think that in the past, I didn't even have to log in. I just renewed the license by going and paying for it at one of the ham clubs or something like that, but this time, anyway, uh, but then I got to thinking, you know, I never use the ham radio unless, uh, you know, bad weather or something, then I flip it onto the, you know, weather bureau or I tune to one of its, if it's a tornado or something like that, I switch to the, uh, amateur radio site that uh, is uh, gathering information for the weather bill and stuff like that. But I also got to think, you know, I, I can't afford, a, a, you know, I kind of consider this a hobby. And then photography is a hobby. And uh, amateur radio was a hobby. And I can't afford, I can't even afford one hobby. And although I have a really nice, I have two handy talkie radios, uh, which I can't use to transmit, I can still tune and listen to something. But, uh, uh, so, you know, I, I wouldn't be spending more money for another, well, I would be, I know myself, that's why, you know, that's why I've accepted the fact to give up, my, you know, to uh, not have a ham radio license to transmit because I know I would like, you know, one of the really, really expensive handy talkies that uh, do amateur radio license, you know, amateur radio uh, walkie talkies that do so much. And uh, so I'm just eliminating one of the things that I spend money on. And there was other things with the I might still be paying for them, you know, uh, things that I paid where I could log into a site and load the new repeaters and the amateur radio satellites and stuff into the, you know, and it wasn't about much money, but still all those things add up. So, let me have a drink here. Yes, I'm looking over the time. 
You know, I, I've mentioned several times that I have a whole bunch of keyboards. And uh, I was, um, say that G915. Yeah, that's, that's just way too much money for a keyboard. I mean, you can get some fantastic keyboards for, you know, $30 or something or other. Here's the G, G915. Is that the same one? TKL? Yeah, one's 149 And uh, somebody down here is selling it for 114 Hmm. Uh, now, here's one. Well, here's one I just thought, okay, it's only $100. And it's the uh, Logitech G Pro. But then, <laughs> then I look up here, and there's the G915 uh, TKL. Now, I can't remember. Uh, there was one of them that I looked at. I looked at like four of them. And, uh, hmm. Huh. That might have been the... Anyway. The one that I looked at, I forget which one that was, except it wasn't a cheap one. Uh, you can poke, pull up from the software on the side and you can... Uh, you don't have to program it yourself. You can pull it up and tell it which key you want. You know, you can change uh, the secondary key that it does or whatever it does. It was a list, you know, like this long of stuff. Then, of course, I'm thinking, what, why would I, I never, you know, so. So. Um, I, 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 was, I was sent uh, years back a ton of, uh, headsets to review. I don't know. I, I reviewed them, for, you know, for Amazon. And then uh, I gave them all away except for one. And I, it's an inexpensive one. That's worth well, well, you, a whole bunch of uh, videos, a whole bunch in the past that I made with the microphone. Or with the, uh, well, yeah, actually with the microphone because I, I didn't use them for listening, you know. Um, Although you can listen to your audio to see how it's actually going out, but I never did that. But, um, you know, this microphone here is working really well now that I've got it uh, close to my face. And here in a few days, I'll have it much closer. So the audio ought to be even better. But uh, with a Logitech... G Pro X. Oh, that's a wireless, by the way. I really do, wouldn't need a wireless. Uh, so maybe I could get something, you know, one cheaper, a headset. But I would only be using it for, you know, the microphone for this. So I don't know. Not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, by the way, that's... Um, wow, look at that. <laughs> oh, I see. I was going to say, well, there's a keyboard that I'm using, G915. Did I say keyboard? I mean mouse. G... No, I'm using a G502, which looks identical. And it is a Logitech and everything. But I see now... I thought they were trying to sell the Logitech G915 G9, for $358, but I see it's the mouse and the keyboard. Hmm. 
one-handed micro-mechanical keyboard. Wow. I can't think of why anybody would need that, but maybe there's somebody that, you know, only has one hand or is paralyzed with the other hand. You know, it could it can be anything. Yeah, there, it, I don't think that's for those people. I guess it's mechanical gaming keyboard that's supposed to be really fast or something, but I mean, it's just amazing the uh, stuff that is out there. I see they have here, down here, uh, uh, you know, this next to a regular keyboard, so. I, I can't do two things at once. I'm lucky I can use a mouse and a keyboard. Uh, is that Randy Rape? Uh, yeah, it is. Whatever his name is. It's just amazing um, the quality of, and he, he did that from the beginning when he started out making these anti Trump things and other things like that. And I saw him interviewed someplace, and he talked about how he started out, and just amazing what he was able to do himself. And uh, he, had, he had to learn how to do it as he went along. But it's just amazing the, uh, the quality, you know, that he's got real, he's got a ton of talent. And uh, I think it's Randy Rain, Randy Rainbow, I think. Randy Rain, you know, pops up the fast, I can't read it. And it's just amazing, people that have talent. I don't have any talent, I have some abilities that I didn't that I just acquired, you know, if something that I acquired, I missed out on all, all, all the other things, the things that would make me money, you know. I'm not good with money. And I'm not blaming my parents. And, uh, but I think it was mainly my mother. What I think, I'm not sure, I don't remember, I actually don't remember these things so much, you know. But I guess every day she must say, you need money today, you know, for candy bars and soda pops when I was walking home from school and that, that kind of stuff. And I guess I'd say, yes, I in, in my head, I, uh, you know, I, I cut her own grass and I watered our lawn. And when my dad passed out in the car in the driveway, I went in and waited until it got dark and drug him inside so the neighbors wouldn't see. I'm sure they already saw. Uh, but anyway, I I never, you know, delivered newspapers. I never uh, worked at a grocery store and carried groceries uh, for people or something, you know. So, uh, and like I mentioned before, I never got a spanking. I mean, maybe I got one when I was in a diaper or something. Maybe I got one, but I never got a spanking. And, uh, and I mentioned the other day, so I won't go through that. It's kind of embarrassing. You know? I'll tell you. Uh, my parents sent me to, you know, a Catholic school, Holy Name grade school to begin with. Well, for kindergarten, I did go to public school, and I think it was half a day. Uh, Oh, what was the name of it? I've been in my mind for years, but anyway. Uh, Horse Man School. I guess Horse Man used to be a educator or something or other. I think it wasn't just he was an educator at a school. I think he was uh, maybe he wrote books or something. 
So it was in Kansas City, Missouri, Horseman. I went for half a day. My at uh, that we just came back from uh, from being out in California. My p parents both were out there uh, building Liberty ships. They were in the Boilermakers Union, and uh, then they came back and then moved into a rented room at a lady's place. She rented out a few rooms. She was a seamstress. And uh, later on, she di di died. She died of lockjaw. And uh, when you go to the hospital, if you go to the hospital, they probably ask you, you know, you know, if you go to the emergency room, uh, have you had your tetanus shot? And you probably say, you know, no, I, you know, and they said, well, you should get one. And now I actually had tetanus shots uh, for quite a few years, working as a welder and a border maker and all that kind of stuff because of, you know, rusty metal and all that kind of stuff. So I would get tetanus shots. But um, this lady, Mrs. Hannah, uh, my mother made, you know, we lived in a room there for, I'm not sure if it was a year or six months or whatever it was, because we'd just come back from California. Uh, and uh, uh, so my mother, so I was there for kindergarten and that was public school. So my mother walked me over to the school for my first day and left me and then my mother walked back home and then she turned around and there I was behind her. So so she had to walk me back. But anyway, Mrs. Hannah, anyway, my mother, I never called my parents mom and dad or I called them Jim and Betty. But anyway, uh, Betty had to walk me back to the school. But anyway, my mother, uh, would get phone numbers and my mother kept contact with just about everybody that she ran into. I mean, and she had a phone book, but I mean, and then she would, then, of course she wasn't drinking and she wasn't an alcoholic then. But uh, later I can remember when she, when she didn't drink, when I was in, you know, grade school, probably in the fourth, fifth grade, something like that. And she started drinking a beer just so she could sit down at the table with my dad and they could talk or whatever and then she really didn't like beer so then uh, she went to highballs and then she went to alcoholism but both my parents were alcoholics they both worked never missed a day's work my mother never missed a day's work but she she would come home and uh, go in and fix herself a sandwich and whatever and a highball and then she would start with her phone book a, now you were lucky, like one of my father's uh, sisters married, and she married a guy by the name of Anderson, and so, so they ended up in my mother's phone book, A. Now by the time my mother got to H, of course she was calling, you know, like there was Davis, one of my father's sisters married a Davis. So she was a Davis. And but by the time my mother got to H, that was not good. I can remember coming in to make a TV dinner. That's before there was microwaves. You had to cook it in the oven. Uh, but then I'd hear my mother, she'd call the number, you know, like Howard, one of the Howards. And it was a bunch of them. And then she, uh, I got disconnected, and she called back the same number, you know, at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, and they would answer, I guess, because they were probably concerned, you know, hey, it might be an emergency, you know, and then she said, well, I wake up disconnected, you know, so uh, how long is, oh, 24, okay, we're coming up on 30 minutes, I didn't intend to. Anyway, uh, before long, I'll have a microphone stand. Um, 
I think I'm going to leave the Roku TV set up. And I've had it for years. I think, well, I, I just, uh, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to do it. Believe me, I've had it for years. And very rarely, I usually, sometimes I would hook it up for a day. Usually not even for a day, and then I'd take it down. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it hooked up. By the way, I went and looked for the first time at uh, on you, you know, on YouTube, and uh, saw my own like video that I made the other day or two ago, and that actually looked good on a television set. So uh, maybe I'm going to have good-looking video for a while, and maybe have good-sounding audio. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, watching.